So uh, mine is but a simple task this morning. Happy Youth Day uh, for all the youth. Um, and uh, mine's a simple task just to welcome you all. Uh, just to remind you to put yourselves on speak of you, uh, throw any questions in the chat group. And just to remember that there's a larger audience today because we are streaming live as we speak on Facebook. So there'll be a Facebook audience and there's an online audience. We're getting really, really good at this. And uh, without further ado, let me hand over to the host with the most, Mr. Derek Mzonelli. Derek, over to you, my man. Hello, hello everybody. <laughs> good morning. And uh, super youth day to everyone. Um, can everyone hear me all right? If you cannot, uh, please start. Uh, let Josh know he's going to be my uh, handy assistant on the tech side. Um, yeah, happy youth day. Um, wow. Um, we're live even on Facebook, you know, really getting into this. Uh, we're growing the value add brand because the brand is productive. Um, guys, I'll say we live in exciting times. What a time to be alive. So full of possibility and boundless opportunity. What a time to be alive. This is the time to alive. This is your time. And that's my message to the youth today. My message really say, what is, this is the time to be alive. This is your time. And I'm hoping that uh, as a youth member, you, you also see it like that. That when you're young, that essay is full of possibilities and you're not confined to the four walls that surround South Africa. So happy youth day. Um, I must say you should be applauding yourself as well for uh, waking up early and making our session today. Um, that shows quite a bit of commitment. In fact, you could have been doing any number of things and you chose to, to join us. So, so welcome and do pat yourself on the back for that. Uh, value add is a great way to be spending your time to move life forward. Um, this is the first conference, Learning by Unlearning. So what we're doing here is we are learning and part a big part of learning is unlearning. And, uh, and we're going to be delving right into that. Uh, my name is Derek Mazzanelli. I'm a value add uh, participant. I like to think of myself as a value add uh, practitioner. Um, as you, you, Vic was saying earlier, um, be logging into www.valueed.co.za to see more programs, to understand a bit more about value add, and uh, share the live stream with uh, all, you know, all the people you know on Facebook. So today, guys, is the 16th day of June, and we're speaking about marketing. We're speaking about relationships. We're talking about networking. What do those three things mean today? Um, this is our third day of a session, and, and uh, the first day, we really spoke a lot with quite a corporate slant, you know, in terms of what you do in that, in that corporate environment. Yesterday, we were speaking quite a bit about being future fit, what you do in the present to make yourself um, productive and, and contribute in the future. So what is the future of work? Both of those days at the center spoke about you. So I'm going to keep moving that vein and say today is also about you. Today, we're talking about learning and unlearning in, in terms of marketing, relationships, and networking. It is about you. So to, to, to start things off, I mean, uh, I always believe in clarity, absolute clarity where possible. Um, learning, guys, is defined as the process of acquiring new understanding, knowledge, behavior, skills, values, attitudes, and preferences. So it's a process. It's ongoing. You're very bold to call yourself learner. You are learning, always learning. Unlearning is to discard something learned, especially a bad habit or false or outdated information from one's memory. Now, I'd say I'm not quite a youth myself, but I'm very interested in youth matters. Um, and, and, and I spend quite a bit of time uh, developing uh, youth within my space. But I can say in, in my 25 years in business, it has shown that it's never easy. It's always hard. But in business, you also learn that the opposite of hard is not easy. 
what you really aim for in a business is predictability. How do you predict the future so you can play a proactive role um, because you have defined it? You're fitting in to niche markets because you understand what those markets are all about. However, it's not about me. I have the honor today of hosting a great forum of astute, profound professionals who are really giants in marketing, relationships, and networking. And I guess I can pat myself on the back modestly to say, look at the company I keep. Because value add in part is about you. It's about the I, what I can do, what I can develop. And look at the company I've managed to, to keep via value add. Um, in my distinguished panel, I've got Oli Makushra. I've got Stacy Fong, who's a marketing specialist. I've got Stacy Fong, who's a career development practitioner and counseling psychologist. And Alison Holmes, who's a networking specialist. Um, I'm assuming everyone can hear me all right. Um, to get going, um, in terms of our learning by unlearning conference, I'll introduce Oli Makushra first. As I said, she's a marketing specialist, a marketing consultant at Lubinza Love. Um, studied at the University of Aden, uh, Iberdeen, a specialist in brand development and execution, an expert in marketing management, specializing in the pharmaceutical space. And Paul is perfect to speak to us today because when you work, if there's one thing about working in the pharmaceutical space is you're never done learning. In fact, you're never done with exams. Your whole life is one exam after the other, after the other, so as to understand uh, products and where they're placed. So welcome, Polly. I'm very glad to have you here. Polly, um, before we get started, what warm youth day message do you have for the youth? Oh my goodness. <laughs> First of all, happy June 16, everybody. It's quite exciting that we are still here. You know, I always think back, how old was I? What was going on on this yeah. day? All I can remember was a tear gas. Yes. yes. I just remember it here, kids. So <laughs> the kids of today, you don't understand how fortunate you are mm -hmm. that somebody gave up their lives for you. Yeah. You know, so take it in, run with it. Yeah. You know, it's it's all here for you. So that's just the first thing I just wanted to say to them. Say, you are so fortunate to run with it. Yes, it's Excellent. doom and gloom because unemployment is here, but it's a challenge. Yes. which fits so nicely to the topic today. How do we unlearn exactly. so we can grow and move forward in these challenging times? Excellent. Now, you make a good good, good point there, Tori, that our country is rich in many, many ways, and even our history is very much like that. And June 16th, fortunately, a day that was so dark, morbid, has actually become a beautiful day, a day, day full of celebration, and a day where we can step back, separate the leaves from the branches, and develop our youth. So um, we'll chat a bit more around that. Guys, we're also joined today by Stacy Fong. Stacy is a career development practitioner and counseling psychologist. Graduate of the University of Johannesburg, she holds a BA in honors in psychology, master's in, in counseling psychology, is a lecturer at the British International School. As we all know, it's very hard to get into the, into the British National School, never mind to lecture there. Uh, counseling psychologist, the University of JHB is among, among the other jobs she's done. She's been in counseling psychology at Headway, uh, at Entunjeni at Community Center as well. Warm Youth Day message, Stacy. do you have anything to say to our youth? Hello, everybody, and welcome to this chilly youth day. But I'm super excited to be here and to, to hopefully have a conversation and dialogue around, around like what we can do for youth and how we can build our skills. So my warm message for you today is embrace the opportunity we've been given to learn and unlearn. Um, and to learn the skills that our predecessors have given us the opportunity to. And so I'm hoping that today is going to be that start for us to do that together. So that's from me. Excellent, Stacey. And I like that. I mean, I think part of the reason why we are in Value Ed is the powerful word you just said now, to do things together. The strength of the collective. 
And I think if we all sit back and know that we can live vicariously through others, we develop the youth, they move forward, and it becomes a celebration for all of us from which we benefit. So thanks, Stacey. We look forward to hearing from your many, many insights on our topics today. Lastly, and definitely not least, we've got Alison Holmes. Alison Holmes is a networking specialist in the UK. She is based in the UK. So as you'd expect with value add, we are extremely global. We're all global citizens. Um, part of what Alison does is she helps you learn the art of networking and how to get more business. Now, as a business executive myself, I sit and I say, I really want my guys to network. They must always be networking. Our team is always networking. But does that contribute to the bottom line? Well, Alison guarantees that it contributes to the bottom line by training and development. Overcoming fears of networking, uh, navigate the nuances of building your own trusted relationships. And she teaches how to nail the 60 second pitch. So there's a lot for us to learn, uh, in, including myself today. She's the, she was previously the marketing director of Perisha Group, the vice president of Hereford Worcester Chamber of Commerce, that is a mouthful, and regional director of RWB Global, among other, other, other things that she's done. So she has run businesses at scale. Um, today is Youth Day, Alison, and I know it's probably a different uh, day out in the UK. Um, what message might you have to uh, up the spirits of the youth for us today? Yeah, morning, everybody. I'm super excited to be here with you. Um, youth Day, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, the youth are our future, and we know that. So this is about taking time to invest in your future for the youth, but by reaching out and connecting with people who can help you on your journey. Don't mm. feel alone. Um, I know mm. we've all got different experiences. I felt very alone when I was young and I didn't know what I didn't know. But I yeah. wish I'd reached out to people who could maybe help me at different stages. So absorb. And I think learning, don't think of it as being at school. There's all sorts of learning that we can have through curiosity and through yes. um, researching and things like that. Yes. So embrace every moment, have fun on the journey as well, and just reach out to everybody. So happy Youth Day, everybody. <laughs> Yes, happy you day indeed. No, thanks, Alison. I think that you, that you really touched on a key point, and that is, is, is what I was just saying earlier about the collective, is that have people you can latch on to. I mean, we spoke quite a bit on day one about how you need to find a sponsor or you're working in a corporate environment that, you know, to kind of shout on your own as an individual in a corner about a, a mind-blowing idea of a new way of doing things may not quite give you the rewards that you might have by linking with a sponsor, by selling your ideas at a smaller scale to have someone who has a louder voice uh, continue with the message. So it is indeed a team effort. In terms of unlearning though, Alison, I mean, you traveled the furthest, so maybe I should start off with you. Um, in terms of unlearning, okay. I've just said earlier that networking is everything. And I've, I've got very much of a sales background. So network is probably 90% of what we do. You know, it's, it's, it's the ticket to the game. Who's sales people. And I'd like to tell you, when I was young, I was really shy and I wasn't a salesperson. I was a graphic designer and, um, and I was forced to go to a networking event, which is kind of what I loved and hated about it. But yes. networking is for everybody. And, and I want people to unlearn the, the preconceived idea that when you go networking, it's in a room full of business people in suits. Mm -hmm. Networking is so much more than that. It's about creating connections and building trusted relationships, whether it's your personal life or your professional life. Yes. But if you think about it, you know, in your church, in your gym, whatever social groups you're in, that is networking. Mm -hmm. This is networking here today. If yeah. you see somebody here today that you connect with, reach out to them and start having a, a Zoom chat because networking is not just for sales. It's mm. for everyday life. And mm. when you're, and we had, you know, great talk yesterday by Elise, Outplace and Careers, Referway, edu you know, educating um, graduates and things like that. Yes. But when you are looking for a job and when I get youngsters who look for a job, oh, I'll take anything. 
but be very strategic and say, actually, I'm looking mm. for a job where I can get the bus and I'm really yes. good at talking to people. And yes. that is networking. That is reaching out to connections of connections to help yes. you get to where you want to be. So it's, it's for life and it's for everybody. It's just learning the art of how to um, unlearn what your preconceived ideas were and understand yes. that it's, it's, it's a lonely place without a, a network out there. So start growing yours now. Start it here today. Mm, mm. Absolutely. I, I cannot agree more. Um, and you touched on something there about being shy. And, and before I, I, I move away from you, I, I, is that not a big challenge? That some people are extremely, extremely bright and, and extremely gifted but aren't necessarily the people who want the light on them, who want things to shine on them and who want the attention in a room. How do you network when you're the most shy one in the family? That's a really good question. And it's okay to be shy and it's okay to be an introvert. You are what you are. Mm. But I would say, um, do it, find somebody else who's quite shy and start chatting to them. So reach out yes. to somebody who's really quiet in the room. So mm. if you've seen them on Zoom and they haven't talked at all, but you, yes. you kind of know what they do, say, just reach out to them or ask for some help somewhere. How can I overcome? There's a, there's a great Will Smith video about overcoming fears. And, you know, mm. you're scared of everything and 90% yes. of it doesn't come true. And what's the worst <laughs> that's going to happen? Um, yes. So I would say watch that video, but I would uh, reach out to somebody else who seems quite shy or somebody like me who was really shy, who if you'd have told me at the age of 18, I'd be doing this, I'd be like, sure. you've got to be kidding me. Yeah. I was at the back of the class with my hair in front of my face. Don't even yeah. look at me, teacher. Don't make yeah. me speak in front of everybody because I think <laughs> I'm going to crawl under the table. So, and you're always called on because you're trying to avoid eye contact. Sure it, that. Exactly, <laughs> that was me. But remember, when we look at people who are now doing this, it's we've all taken steps to get there it hasn't happened overnight yes. so be yes. patient with yourself and yes. one little win at a time would be my recommendation excellent excellent thanks thanks for that Alison. um i think you know in the corporate space there are different roles that you know different people can play um you'd like to think that you send out those who are less shy into client facing and you make the ones who are more shy, maybe less so. But I think you're very right in saying that across the business spectrum, and even if you're a small business, you know, five of you, um, you have to be networking and you yourselves become a network group to then grow uh, exponentially. Um, Stacy, I know you've done a lot of, work around the psychology of 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 of, of relationships psychology of, of networking and you obviously come from a background where you, you you talk of some of the science behind what then becomes an overt uh, behavior that we show in your understanding of the workforce and the marketplace and pre appreciating that some people are shy and all have different gifts what are the four generations we're seeing in the workplace and how are they different because you know beyond just your personality type there's realist realistically in the workspace environment a myriad of different positions a myriad of different people what are the key four gen um, generations that we find in the workforce Phew. that's quite a question to start with thanks Terry. <laughs> oh, um, we've got to define things and then we'll move from there <laughs> for sure um i think what i'll do is let me focus on the four generations that we're, we're currently seeing in our workforce all right yeah. and i'll just take snippets from the research just so we're not here the whole day focusing on this um mm -hmm. so what we're seeing currently is quite a multi-generational workforce and we're seeing our baby boomers born between about 1946 and 1945 in our work yeah. world all right as well as gen yeah. x gen yeah. y and our gen z's Okay, yes. so in some in some cases, we're actually seeing five generations where we're actually seeing the silent generation in the workforce as well, which is our 80 and 19 year olds who have mm. decided they don't want to retire and they still want to be there. <laughs> um, and those individuals were born between 1925 to about 1945, all right? Mm. But I'm going to focus on the four. So the first one I would say is the baby boomers. Mm. 
All right. And mm. when we look at the baby boomers in comparison to our silent generation, they most likely had uh, more access to education and in some cases sure. finances. All right. So sure. we see that this generation is actually a lot more achievement oriented as well as career focused. So we yeah. find that they're actually quite competitive in the workforce because a lot of the the personal self is defined by what they do and their job mm -hmm. all right and they have a very they're very accustomed to working within the hierarchical structure and we'll see here though that they really value human connection and and relationships and and yeah. that value is very important for them because they were raised in a time of consumerism. Mm -hmm. So it was really about being able to build those relationships in terms of networking and sales so that they could go door to door and sell the latest yeah. vacuum cleaner or the mm -hmm. latest gadgets in the kitchen. Yes. All right. So that's how we are seeing our baby boomers at the moment. But then when we move on to the Generation X, where individuals are born between 1965 and 1980, we're seeing that this cohort is a little bit smaller because there was a decline in the birth rates after the baby boom. Okay, So this generation is actually a little bit more flexible. And this generation actually saw their parents also going through tough times during the 80s in terms of finances. Mm. All right. So we see here that there's this change in mindset around being loyal to one employer. They're more sure. open to change in terms of moving to another employer yeah. and not necessarily being more committed. Yeah. Um, the key terms that come from this generation however is the work hard and play hard yes. and the other one is bringing that term to life in terms of we want more work-life balance yes. so yes. we find that because of this generation also being exposed to to two income households now where mom and dad might be working we see that this generation is a little bit more independent they're more self-sufficient they're quite resourceful and they're okay. also able to work more individually and, and on their own in a lot of cases yes, yes. And when we compare that to Gen Y, our millennials, where there is loads of research on this generation, our mm -hmm. actually biggest cohort within the workforce at the moment. So in America, I think it's sitting at about 35%, all right, okay. where they take the workforce. This yeah. generation is a little bit different to the previous one. They value collaboration and teamwork, and they want to find a career that has meaning and purpose for them. Yeah. Um, so compared to your previous generations where they wanted to put in the hours to climb up the corporate ladder, our millennials sure. are saying, no, we want to apply for many different jobs, build skills, because mm. this is their mm. most efficient mm. way of advancing. Yes. Okay. And strangely enough for millennials, salary isn't as important. What they find more important here is benefits, perks, and the opportunity for personal development within the workspace and having leaders who are able to almost come to their level when it comes to these kinds of things. All right. So you might see a lot of our millennials within the classic corporate environment, but we're also seeing them a lot in startup companies and especially within the tech space. Yes, of course. So, when we move then to Gen Z, we see that these are I generation, they are digital natives, and they've been born yes. between 1996 and 2012. And I mean, yes. as Rafi was saying yesterday, they have ID numbers that have got like zero, 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 mm -hmm. which is like, whoa, okay, so they're quite young. So we're uh, seeing some of them, you know, between the ages of like 23, 24, 25 in our workforce. And we're seeing them a lot in our entry level positions at the moment, learnerships, graduate programs, um, and internships, right? Mm -hmm. And like Gen X, this generation has also seen their, their family go through some financial crises, all right? Mm -hmm. So they actually value, what do you, they actually value financial security and financial wellness and they really appreciate being taught about loans tax yes. um how to save all right yes. so it's very different to our millennials in that sense is, is they have that need for financial security and mm. they're quite an autonomous generation because if they have a real life problem they're most likely to google or youtube a video to solve that problem all yes. right so yes. there's 
there's less of that need to kind of reach out to someone for help and more of this, let's go to the digital community to get some yes. help. Yes, yes. Right. So when we also look at them, they are also more open to that idea of online entrepreneurship. And we have a lot of youngsters who are self-made Instagram and YouTube, um, mm. YouTube influencers out there. So yes, yes. I hope that kind of wraps up the changes and the differences between our generations. I had to whiz through it because, <laughs> you know, there's yes, a lot of did. interesting stuff coming with all of our other hosts today. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yes, no, thanks, Stacey. Um, very insightful. Uh, and I saw a comment here from, uh, I think it was Josh, that said, uh, you're describing me exactly. So I assume he, he falls in that uh, Gen Z uh, sector. And uh, obviously, plenty of tech savvy and uh, lives a life of social media. Um, we'll, we'll come back to, to quite a bit of that. But what I, what sounds very interesting here in terms of youth day is that youth are you saying rely on each other? If I'm getting my source of, of information, I have questions and I, I then go into social media, would I then go a generation up? Would I go a generation down? Or you'd assume that most of your social media circle is pretty much in your age group. Who do they generally tend to? Sure, that's a tough one. I know for mm -hmm. me personally, as a millennial, um, mm -hmm. I like to to get advice from from older individuals. Mm -hmm. um, and when it's something to do more with with something that's kind of a current life situation that we're all experiencing, I yes. then go to social media and I start YouTubing where I read um, upon other sort of famous uh, YouTubers and that kind of yes. thing. Yes. Um, but I also like to personally hear the stories of our previous generations. I find that there's a lot of information that I can get from there mm. Um, mm. in terms of building relationships. And I found that's where in terms of building relationships, I've learned a lot more is, is from the older generations. Mm. Yeah, so I can't mm. give it to you from a scientific perspective, but I'm going to give sure. it to you from my own experience as from a millennial. <laughs> Yeah, that's what that's what uh, today is about. And I like to think, you know, networking is very much about that because you can always read books. You can always have your own uh, experiences, but you want to branch out and, and, and go to, to, to other areas as well. Uh, Colleen, uh, it's probably my doing um, that I've made you so quiet. So <laughs> um, what, what, what would be your take uh, in terms of, of uh, learning and unlearning? I mean... There's an uh, old adage that says, stick to what you know. Uh, how about unlearning and exploring? What, what are your thoughts on that? You know, before I even go there, I'm just yeah. listening to what Sweet is saying. I'm like, oh my goodness, she's describing everything to the T. You know, <laughs> I fall in, in the generation X and then I get to work with the Zs and the millennials and yes. I come with this wealth of information and they come <laughs> with their tech savvy and then I'm having to adapt. They're also having to adapt so we can all meet yes. somewhere in between and, and, and share yes. the knowledge with each other. It's, it's, yes. it's quite interesting times. You know, mm. the situation of sticking to, to what you know, it's um, in a marketing environment, it's, it's so easy to be in a comfort zone and say, this is what has worked for me and mm. I am sticking to it, you know? Mm. And, and I, I say that I'm busy right now with um, brand planning and tactical planning and the yeah. marketing and advertising agency that I briefed and I said to them, okay, I have this much money. This mm. is my target market. This is what we did last year. Yes, it went. You can see the sales. We've done very well. I can see the growth. Yes. But yes. so they're saying to me, yeah, go and do the same thing that you did last year. I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, taking, that's taking the consumer for granted. You know, mm. saying we're just going to stick to what we've done. We're just going to carry on. It worked for us. And forgetting yeah. that things change, you know, things yeah. change. And I said to them, fine, I will go to radio, but I need something spicy. I am not just going to play an ad. I need something that's going to talk to them, something that's going to say, mm. oh, it's here again. And then they stick with me. So this yeah. whole thing of sticking to what you know in 2021, it's, it's unacceptable. You know, mm. I, I'm, on, on Friday last week, I had a sore throat. Yeah. And I found... The, my doctor's room and I said I don't want to stay in your room in a queue yes. I just want yes. my script I just want my script I've had a sore throat before you know what to give me and they said to oh. me okay be here at 2 p.m and pick up your script 
And I did exactly that. Pick up my street, got my medication, and I'm fine now. And it made mm. me think about that this morning before we had this session. And I was thinking of a medical rep who is used to the old way of doing things where you print a brochure, you put it in yes. a doctor's table, and you're hoping that some patient will come and sit there and read your brochure. What do you mm. do now? Because things have changed. Both well, are saying that I don't want to sit in a doctor's room and reading brochures. I don't even want to touch a brochure because someone might have sneezed on it. <laughs> you know, so so we yeah. having to, to we are challenged as marketers that how do I reach Koli? How do I influence the doctor that's going to write a prescription for Koli to give Koli my medication? So you mm. can't stick to the old ways. You need to adapt. You need to change according to what the marketing is asking from. You. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that's 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 the marketing side of things. And, and another and interesting thing I saw was Christian Renato. I don't know if you guys saw this with the Coca-Cola mm. situation. Yeah, so, so he didn't want to speak in front of Coke. <laughs> oh, my yes. word. Oh, my yeah. goodness. You know, I'm, I'm just reading on Twitter how people are responding to how, you know, it was wrong of him to remove Coca-Cola bottles in front of him and, and talk about mm. water um, mm. because Coca-Cola is the sponsor. And I'm thinking, yes. well... You know what? We have a responsibility to understand the people we're talking to. They knew mm. all along he's a health freak. <laughs> so there's water as well. Couldn't they have stopped that with one of their water bottles? A Coke water that brand. That really makes good. sense because I mean, part of of our discussion and 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 around marketing and and relationships is probably a genuineness. You know. It's not genuine for Cristiano Ronaldo to be telling people to go and drink as much Coke as they can because he probably hasn't drank Coke in the last 12 months. Is, yeah. is, is, is that kind of what you're thinking? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying that we don't do, we take, we have this thing of I'm a big brain. Yes. And you relax and you take things for granted. This is a day of social media. I mean, yeah. they've lost what, two billion? And yeah. just that little incident, we take things for granted. So you might even say, don't just understand your consumer. Understand uh, your influencers. Or And he may not have been necessarily an influencer uh, in terms of, of Coke. I mean, I, I don't think they, they might not have signed with him directly. But definitely yeah. it's to say, in that opportunity, a Coca-Cola should be saying, well, if we optimize this opportunity, let's speak through Ronaldo, but to Ronaldo as well and put water in front of our Ronaldo so that he speaks about a healthier lifestyle. Or even if he, does, he doesn't mention water, he's drinking it, he's in front of it, and it all just speaks to, to, to him as an individual and, 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 and even how he makes a living. Exactly. But having said, having said that, Oli, how much of the old do you get rid of? You, know? uh, you do need to unlearn. You do need to explore. So maybe it's not stick to what you know. Is it not stick to what you know works with an open mind? Or how do you know if it worked well last year, how much of it do you discard? You don't remove everything, obviously. Mm. You know, it's about mm. adapting. You take, you take what works. Um, yes. Let me rephrase this. It's, it's about knowing what's relevant and what's yes. not relevant anymore. You take what's yes. relevant for what you do. What is not relevant, you leave it behind. It's, it's about adapting so you can survive. And, you know, having said that, I mean, a lot of being in corporate is very much about being open-minded uh, and even in having probably even more so in your own business. It's just that obviously because there's less bureaucracy in a smaller environment compared to, to large corporates. There does seem to be a top-down mentality, which is frowned upon now. I mean, you know, EQ speaks to listening and, and being a bit more flat and structured. Yeah. Um, while it is necessary in some instances, for example, a parent to tell a child what to do, you know, your parenting, it's a, it's a, it's a boss um, and, 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 and so on type relationship. There's, uh, there's a boss and receiver. Why is that so destructive in a work environment? Because I'm thinking you may have wanted to change a marketing plan and somebody at the, at the, has decided, no, this has worked and they want to stick to that. How is that top-down mentality a challenge in business? Yeah, it's, there's a cultural diversity issue here as well. 
I mm. see, especially um, our black youth in a corporate environment, where yeah. they they coming with the respect. They see sure. Sisoli, they see mm. Mamkoli, and mm. and they scared to speak up. And then I have yeah. to push them and say, no, I need you to speak. I need you to hear your views. This is mm. a work environment. You mm. yes, I understand. You call me Sisi. You call me Mama because you understand sure. that you're as old as my eldest son. But yes. this is a different place. Yeah, I need you to speak up because I need to hear from you. I need mm. your views as well. Um, so I find our cultural background as well can be very limiting, you know, yes. when it comes to our youth and the work environment. I also find what I liked when um, Sis was speaking about the different generations, about mm. the, the, the boomers, is, yes. for example, um, there's a youth at work who are expected to go to work every day. And they mm. get to say that, look, I use a taxi and I'm worried about COVID. Can I please work yeah. from home because I have a laptop? Whereas yeah. the, the, the seniors are like, you will hear from me. If I say you come to work, you come to work. You know, it's, mm. it's those challenges that how, how do we bridge this gap and understand that just because he's 22 years old or 26 years old, he's an adult. Yeah. He yes. is an adult. So, so those mm. things are quite a challenge. That how do we bridge this gap? Oh, yes, I understand. I mean, we, if you talk uh, more, a lot of African culture, there's quite a distinction in how you, you treat people by age. Yeah. Um, and we, we've come into a world where age plays less of a role. I mean, you know, um, I spend a lot of time, it happens probably less here, but, you know, quite a bit of time in the States in my earlier days. And you could literally get a guy come out of varsity and become a boss <laughs> as an yeah. almost okay. running the ship, you know, not quite the CEO, but definitely well within walking to the, do the door of the board with a view yeah. of them obviously being a high flyer and continuing in that vein. That's yeah. very challenging in, a, in an African environment where, like you're saying, a person will call you mama or they, it might be hard for someone to say, mama, I disagree. Hmm? <laughs> in a work environment and and those are some of the nuances of, 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 of African uh, work environments um, yeah. and how do you then get around that I mean do you call people aside individually and say you know speak up or how would you address some of these challenges because they do have a negative impact on your outcomes yeah so, so the best way that I've found is that I give them tasks I say okay. here's here's a task that I need you to go and do and you're going to come back and present yeah. to me because yeah. in that way, you're allowing them to be independent. You're allowing them to, to show you their skills and what they're capable of. So mm. when you make that environment safe for them to be able to show their skills and speak up, and then you're yes. coaching at the same time, then they relax. Okay. Then they find with it. You know, the, mm. the whole mama or whatever thing changes. They don't look at you now as, as the elder. They look at you as, oh my, oh my goodness, this is my coach. They're actually helping me to grow. You know, mm. if I'm speaking up, I'm not being disrespectful. Mm. It's actually a good thing. So, so in those environments where you allow them to, to speak up and be independent, give them tasks, that's when they open up and then they grow. Okay, give people tasks. No, that's, that's, uh, that's actually very interesting. And I think when it comes from a good place that you're giving someone something you know that they should be able to do, you've given them the room to do so, yet you're involved in helping them to succeed in that particular task you've given uh yeah. probably goes a long way in, in in getting the best out of a workforce irrespective yeah. of which generation they're in yeah but stacy i mean you've uh, made a, a life of understanding this uh what are the benefits of having a multi-general uh, generational workforce why would somebody not want to work with a whole lot of me's <laughs> you know people who are the same age etc as you saw all right so if i think about you know, the benefit, I think the, the one would definitely be the age diversity. Um, yes. Because we're coming from so many different perspectives and yes. growing up in different political climates, we have different ways that we view work and, and the lenses that we use, right? So I right. think it's it's going to drive innovation when we have these conversations in the different generations and speak about um, how we view things, what are our perspectives? So then it drives innovation, right? It also then contributes to skills diversity because we have 
our our previous generations who have that very specific specific skill of being able to yes. build into personal relationships they know how to pick up a phone and build trust over over the phone they know mm. how to write letters and we can also then trans sort of transform it into an email space where they mm. can build connection through writing as well and then we have our younger generations who might be a little bit more tech savvy so we can then see within some companies already they're building these two-way mentorship programs where we have our older generation teaching the youth these skills mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. vice versa where the youth are mm -hmm. saying okay this is how we communicate online um, or this is how we can do things digitally so I think it's very beneficial then to have this multi-generational uh, workforce because it is very beneficial then. You also then become more attractive to potential audiences, customers. You also become yes. more attractive as an organization and a corporation to um, to customers as well in terms of, oh, there's, there's that person there and there's this person here. Um, and so you have different spaces or people that, that mm -hmm. your customer base can then relate to. Um, so you're mm -hmm. also definitely more attractive as well to getting different kinds of candidates into your organization. Interesting, so interesting. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Interesting. Just to, I mean, if that is the case and you now you're running an organization or even a small company, but people in different generations, are you then saying what a business should be doing is allowing each one of these people to be customer facing? Or if it's within your skill set, you, you are in a, in a, you have the opportunity to better utilize members of a team by allowing them to portray their strengths even outside of the business so so that you can you can tap into their resources sure that's a tough <laughs> um i would say yes if the strength there is customer yes. base right yes um, and i think it's very important as as our future leaders as the youth and as well as our current people in the workforce to then create like we call you sorry i can't pronounce your name um no problem, yeah. right? To, to have those conversations around how we utilize our strengths and what are our values as a team as well um, and how that plays into how we're going to reach our customers or our audience, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that becomes very important. So it's really important about building that trust within your team so you can mm -hmm. have those positive relationships and, mm -hmm. and using techniques like... Um, Inquiry, asset inquiry. <laughs> I slipped my mind now. Um, initiative inquiry, that's it. To really get an understanding of someone's strengths within your team and then utilize yes. so it's yes. opening up that conversation between yes. your different generations. And, and the key mm -hmm. to that then is in trust. Um, mm -hmm. And having our leaders being brave enough to have these conversations and facilitate them with our teams. Yes. Um, so yeah, yes. to get back to it, yes, I do think everyone can be customer facing if that's the strength that they are willing to bring out. Mm -hmm. If you can find a, a, a an acceptable way to do so for both that person and for the for the client, so you probably would need to have a program that makes everyone comfortable to be client facing. Yeah, as in. Mm -hmm. So work on one or two things, but still be able to tap into their strengths. Very interesting, very interesting. And I like uh, the two-way mentorship, you know, and it's probably even in, 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 in my space, I'll use that quite a bit more because obviously for those of us who've worked for some time, we work across the, the generational um, uh, areas, you know. Um, but that's very interesting to say that, well, it's a bit of a tit for tat, you know, I... I give to you, you give to me, we do a bit of exchange, and hopefully you can make this a very positive learning environment for everyone. Learning come unlearning. <laughs> okay. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Um, I don't know if there's any question from, from uh, any of our, uh, our guests that uh, you'd like to put through, Josh? Yeah, so we've got a question from Elise. I'm just going to mm. read it as follows. It's great to hear that is your leadership approach very much needed but there are many leaders who are unfortunately who unfortunately don't encourage individuals to speak up and contribute this is mm -hmm. where leaders also need to unlearn and relearn the question that she's asking is 
what would your recommendation be for an individual who is in an environment where the leadership approach does not enable speaking up, for example? Yes. Okay, Claudia, uh, did you hear that? I think that's for you. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'm going to start by saying there's a tendency of, um, because unemployment is so high, and then these youngsters mm. get a job, and then they feel like you've been done a favor. Mm. The perception is probably with you. It's not necessarily the leaders. It's how you view yourself. Mm. If you view that situation mm. as they've done me a favor, they've given me a job. There's so many youngsters like me who are unemployed. You want to come yeah. from that space where you don't want to speak up because you feel like they've done you a favor, but they haven't, they didn't do you a favor. Mm. They need your skills. They value you. So if you change the way you see things and understand that you are being valued, then things change. Sometimes it's just all about you. It's not necessarily those people. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Would you say though, now that there's less job security, I mean, for any person who works, you know that they have a job today and in six months time, in three years time, it, it might be gone. Um, might just not, might not be just out of a business need, you know? Um, so if the work environment is not secure, does that not mean people should be out of their shells a bit more? You know, being a loyal, hardworking, showing up on time, giving it your A game every day doesn't necessarily mean you'll have a job longer than that guy who's late every day and doesn't seem to work the hours you do. Um, because the job environment is not secure, can people still speak out? Can people see themselves as equal and really push boundaries? Or is that just too risky? Does speak out mean I'm being disrespectful? That's no, it has question. to be done. It has to be done with corporate etiquette, of course. Exactly. Exactly. Remember, again, it goes back to you are being valued. You're there mm. because they value you. And, mm. and if you're worried about maybe I'm just going to be here for three months, remember why you're there. You're there to earn some skills because you need those sure. skills for something else. You're sure. just not there. You know, some of the things we are unlearning now is the fact that you don't have to be in corporate forever. Of you course. get there, you get the, the lessons that you need so you can move out and go run your own thing. So in yeah. that short period of time you're there, do what you need to do mm -hmm. in a corporate mm -hmm. etiquette. It does not mean be disrespectful. There's many mm -hmm. ways to, to, um, to put your point across. Just don't be disrespectful. Okay. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and perhaps linked to that, uh, Alison, uh, maybe you could come in here is, in, in not just the sales environment, but generally, you know, close to what Paul is saying is in the work environment, you need to start seeing yourselves more as equals, uh, more as interdependent. However, you don't always have time. I'll give an example. You've got a great idea and you know that the person who seems interested in that line of thinking may be someone who you don't report to or you don't engage with that often. Do we therefore, each of us in any role that we do, even in our own business, have to have a 60 second elevator pitch prepared? And if so, why? Because you might not get more than those 60 seconds to engage. Um, well, I think so, 100%. I say it's mm. for life, not just for Christmas, your 60 seconds. So yes. I think if you're in that environment, if you're working somewhere and you've got a really good idea and you know inside that actually it's gonna make a difference, um, I would think about how you could get across in a storytelling way mm. the solution that this, so the idea that you've come up with, think of the solution it's going to bring. And then if that person you really want to talk to at work is by the kettle, go up to them and say, oh, hi, I hope you don't mind me saying, but actually I've had an idea and this is the, this is the solution I think it's going to bring. And actually, can we sit down and have a cup of coffee about it? You know, get your, your big girl pants, your big boy pants on and just what's the worst that's going to happen? They can say, I'm too busy. Or they might say, wow, that sounds interesting. So think of making it, creating a hook, saying this is an idea. This is the problem it's going to solve mm. to get them intrigued. Mm. And I think, you know, when you're going in for an interview and somebody says to you, oh, tell us a bit about yourself. I would say within 60 seconds, say, this is my biggest strength. This is what I love doing. And this is why I'm really excited to be here with you today to find out more about this job role. 
So mm -hmm. all of a sudden you've grabbed their attention, you've shown from in here your enthusiasm, yes, you're nervous, you can get coaching on this, but you've shown why you're there, you've shown your passion for that job role, but it's yes. got to be authentic because people can tell when it's fake, they really can. And mm. I think, you know, if you've been really good at something from a young age, bring that into it. I've always been fascinated by researching. I've always been fascinated by the, you know, the medical world and I pretended to be a doctor when I was younger. I don't know, bring yes. a bit of humor into it, yes. but, and time yourself and practice it. But when you're practicing it, practice it out loud. Because if you write it down, it never sounds the same as when you, vo when you mm -hmm. vocalize it. Um, mm. So think about the situation you're in. Think about what you want to achieve. Think about yes. um, a little hook for whatever yes. it is, um, because it's capturing people's attention. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But it also speaks to something we were speaking about the, in the, in the yesterday and the day before about preparedness. You know, it's it's almost as if uh, you've got some big celeb that you want to see one day, and when you see them, you're tongue-tied. Well, oh, yeah. whatever had been your hope and, and plan, and it probably falls flat. You know, there goes your opportunity to to get a booking, uh, to sing somewhere so they can hear just how well you sing, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very much about, about being prepared and uh, capitalizing on the opportunity. But again, it says... Too run up to them and sing to them if you can't think what to say. <laughs> but again, yes. Again, Stacey, it seems like it says something about maybe current day doesn't allow you to be too shy. And I say that respectfully because there are honestly some people who just don't want the light on them, even on their birthday. And is it not the case that in today's world that you almost cannot afford that? I mean, unless you're on social media with a pseudonym of some sort and who knows what goes on there. But if, if genuinely you are a, a, a startup business or you're trying to get something going on your own, you almost need to find a way to replace shyness with something. And maybe a good thing to replace shyness with is preparedness because you tend to find that most people, no matter how difficult, are willing to listen to someone who knows their story. You know what I mean? When someone comes to you, even if you disagree with them, but they come to you with hard hitting numbers, they come to you with current research and they come, it becomes hard to discard what they're saying. Is that, it still speaks to that preparedness, but being able to sum it up in 60 seconds, is that the trick? <laughs> I would say so. But I think the key though, and, and I'm yes. training somebody at the moment who's very much an introvert, but they've mm. got, and they've got their own business and they're young. Um, but actually I'm saying, stop focusing on yourself stop focusing on your shyness you know the difference that you can make to somebody so yes. if you focus on the difference you can make and stop making it about yourself that yeah. will drive you to take action because if you're yeah. not taking action if you're not helping the people out there with what you can help them with then you're, yeah. you're doing them a misservice you're doing them a misjustice because actually mm -hmm you know you can transform that person's life yes take yourself out of it take away your nerves take away your shy because this isn't about you it's about them and providing a solution to them and mm. and preparing yes but thinking about it not of yourself what if i yeah. don't what if they don't like like my voice what if they don't like my accent what if they don't understand me this is all mm. about you forget mm. about you it's not about you it's about the difference you're going to make to somebody. And that yes. if you prepare your 60 seconds, all about the other person, the transformational story, the emotions, mm. it will come from in here and you will forget about your nerves. It takes, yes. You will forget about your nerves because this is what you were born to do. And this is the difference it's going to make. I, think I like that, Alison. I like that, Alison. <laughs> Yeah. I like that. This is what you were born to do. And I, I, in an environment, even in South Africa, probably even more so, where jobs are so scarce, it means that you might not just be competing with people who want a job for job's sake. Or if you're running a business, you may not go into a pitch somewhere pitching just with other people randomly. You might find that people are finding a niche because you have to love what you're doing in order to have a chance of closing a deal. You know what I mean? You're, you go in and see someone for 10 minutes, 
20 other people come in, see someone for five minutes, who are they going to choose? They could very easily be choosing the person who was passion coming in and super passion leaving, you know? So maybe in, in this day and age, there isn't space for being timid, if that's the word, or being unsure. You know, we probably need to say, where can you operate and be really comfortable without necessarily being full of yourself, not to be conceited, but very close to that line. When you speak to someone, you say, whether you like me or not, I am the very best at this. So you might want to give me two minutes to hear me out. Yeah? Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Can, can um, Josh, are there any questions from uh, the panel? Can I just quickly add there to what Alison is saying is, yes, I, I think you agree, is I think as human beings, our brains are automatically um, put on to saying the, the negative and putting the spotlight on ourselves by saying, I'm shy. Um, mm. I don't have what it takes. Whereas mm. we can then put the spotlight on, like Alison saying, the next person, but have that yeah. mind shift of saying, this is the strength that I have and I can pull out on. So yes, I might be yes. introverted and being engaged is going to drain my energy. So then when I have this interaction, I'm going to pull out on my extrovertedness. So it doesn't mean that you're an introvert. You're always an introvert. In different exactly. situation, you can bring out your extrovertedness to be able to chat to that person, but know that afterwards you can take your time to just have a nice bath, chillax after the day and then redo and come back to what you need to be doing again. So I think don't define ourselves by labels like introverts and shy. Yes, yes. Things that we, we do in certain situations and we can pull out other things as a human being. We're capable of so, so much. Yeah. I like what you're saying. I like what you're saying. And uh, it comes from... Uh, a place of uh, a scientific place because this is indeed what you've done and you're very right Stacey in the sense that categorizing and pigeonholing is not really probably what this is about I mean all of us are multifaceted human beings and situationally we tend to be different you know uh, and more often than not when you're doing something you really like the liking of that something drives you so it just so happened that you love this topic and suddenly you found yourself talking longer than you're supposed to or asking people to contribute more just because it's something you love and usually you tend to 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 to, to focus on those develop yourself on those and be comfortable to engage in those in those areas so you're quite right maybe it's not about classifying yourself as something and be more situational around it. but as 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 a as youth as someone building your own business realize the challenges that you must have and have a way to work through it much like you said you know i did this big pitch today i really came out of my box and then you go home and have a, a nice a nice bath with a beer or whatever and just reward yourself but be able to calm yourself down and, and, and get yourself uh, back at pace interesting space interesting um guys there any question for our panelists I'm, I'm aware of time i know that it's uh, it's youth day and some of us want to celebrate in different ways and we might have quite a few things on um, so we are coming down to our last uh, uh, 10 minutes, but if there are any questions there, Josh, or any of our panelists. Cool. So I think we've got two questions that kind of follow the line of conversation that we are currently heading in. So I'm going to read both of them, and then I think I'm going to combine them together into a single question. Sure. So the first question is from Mamletseho. It's a question for Alison. If you are an, I think she said introvert, but I think she meant to say extrovert here. If you are an extrovert, networking was easy using platforms like face-to-face -face conferences, for example. Um, given the current environment of virtual platforms so, and social media, how do you suggest introverts could go about networking? And then to tie that in with another question from Hermina, uh, in terms of networking, any recommendations on how to start a networking pipeline when starting from scratch? So I think to combine those two questions, it's kind of how do we use virtual platforms and social media to network and how do you create a pipeline when you're starting from scratch? Right, I'm quite aware of the time, so I'll try and be succinct on this. So. Um, for introverts, I mean, there, there are so many different online networking platforms now. So I think for an introvert to start dipping your toe in, like today, turn your camera on, maybe put your hand up to ask a question. 
Um, so I would find some networking groups online or some clubs or something online. We can start trying to the skill of interacting with people. Um, find something that interests you, that is a topic that you're interested in, because that will help with your nerves. Um, mm -hmm. If you find it interesting, you might want to chat about it because it's something that you understand. So I would say yes. for the introverts, try that. Um, pipeline building. I, when, I, when I'm training, I say to people, why, what connections do you want? Do you want them in the, um, the sports side? Do you want them in career development? Do you want them in that big corporate? Where do you want your pipeline connections to be? So start off with where do you want to be? Why do you want these connections? And then start finding where those people are going to be hanging out online mm -hmm. in virtual events. It may be, I went on a training course years, years ago now, and I knew there's going to be a lot of HR people in that room on that training course. And I was doing recruitment at the time. So I thought, well, I'll go on the training course because I need to learn whatever it was. And I'll be networking with HR professionals. But I'm not there to sell, but I'm getting to know them because we were there all day. And then I built up relationships with them and then I converted them into my pipeline. So don't just think of it as a sales environment. Think about going to webinars where you can talk. LinkedIn, I see Elisa's put LinkedIn is amazing. So think about hanging out in different environments and messaging and connecting people with a short message as to why you would like to chat to them, connect to them, have a virtual coffee. People are very open to virtual coffees. So just start to grow your connections in the space where you want to be or where you aspire to be, where there's people, and on LinkedIn, you can look at people's careers and you think, okay, this is the career path. This is what they've done. Maybe I can connect to them and say, could you spare 15 minutes for a cup of coffee because I aspire to grow into whatever you've done and then start building your connections like that. So there's many ways to start um, a pipeline. But today here, pick some people in here, check them out, and if you think actually there will be good connections because of location, um, career, things like that, um, then just say, hey, why don't we connect and have a virtual coffee? And then the whole point of networking is adding value. Oh, I saw something that was really interesting that you f might find useful. Here's the web link. And it's mm. connecting others and giving. There's a lovely little book. It doesn't take long to read. The Go-Giver. It's a lovely little book. And it's all about connecting and helping because it comes back. So don't think about what can I get. It's if I've got these pipeline in front of me, how can I help? How can I add value to keep on their radar? So if they want to employ somebody like me who haven't got all the skills but have got the right attitude, if I just keep connected with them, if I share a lovely quote, like you are too busy doubting yourself or something, if I'm showing up on their radar every month, not by stalking, not by selling, they will remember me. They will remember something that I've said, which is why the mm. hook and a little story is so important to be yes. memorable, to be memorable. And I um, can I just tell you a silly little story which happened to me yesterday. Um, in the UK, we have to book in to go to the refuse tip we're redoing something in the house and I booked in and you only get so many tickets to go and I booked in every week yesterday I forgot to book in but I thought I had so the grumpy man said you're going to get a fine because you haven't booked in yes. the other guy who was a lot older as well I had had a chat to him the week before about him doing an iron man a random conversation as I'm chucking my cardboard and wood and he was standing there and I said don't you remember me panicking? I don't want a big fine. Don't you remember me? We had a really good chat about you doing Iron Man and me doing mm. a mud runner. Oh yes, I do remember you. you. No, you're all right. You've always had, you've always booked in. Don't do yes. it again. I won't give you a fine. <laughs> I was like, yes. you, but yes. had I not had that random conversation and a memorable conversation, yes. I would have had a hundred pound fine, which is a lot of money. So, yes. Yes. Always be thinking how you can engage and chat to people and just be curious mm. and learn about mm. people because you never know when it's going to come in handy is all I'm going to say. 
yeah. I did buy yeah. them a bottle of Fanta to say thank you. <laughs> yes. Does that answer your question about pipelines and introverts? Hmm. Hopefully, hopefully it's answered your questions. Well, would you like to, uh, uh, to give, I, give that on a go? Reminded me, reminded hmm. me of how I sometimes get myself out of getting a, a traffic fine. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, just, you just have to think on your feet quickly and just say something, engage, make them smile, yeah. and then they let you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah no, this, these conversations are, are, are quite great. They are much needed. I see some of the notes that are coming through that this is not enough time. You know, mm. it's, it's, we learn, we learn. I think for me, the most important thing that I'd like to put across to the youngsters is don't think that you, you're just learning from us. We're also learning from you. We all need each yeah. other. Yes, yes. Yeah. And in, in, in closing, Stacey, is there anything you, you'd like to uh, add? I know that um, one of the things we've learned here or unlearned is not to categorize individuals by generation, you know, so you still have to put in an effort to actually understand those you engage, engage with. What would be some of your closing thoughts around uh, relationship marketing and uh, I think the important around thing that is to actually uh, dismantle the stereotypes we're kind of using mm -hmm. based on the generational research we've heard about, right? And yes. it's important then to treat people equally, but not mm -hmm. the same. Um, and I think it becomes very important then to, to really become self-aware in terms of our own biases in, in terms of ageism, as well yes. as then questioning our own beliefs and values around how we understand work. Mm. And yes. So yes. I think it's very important then to pick out individual um, strengths and values and, and that kind of thing. So just a very brief kind of <laughs> contribution mm. to that question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Stacey. I think uh, very insightful um, and, and uh, we learned a lot from, from each panelist. I think any one of the topics, I mean, had we gone with uh, relationships or gone with marketing, gone with networking, we could discuss each of these for three or four days. So um, it, it was really to, to speak relatively high level, but I think each of you gave a practical example of putting something you have learned unlearning it and putting it into action in the workplace and i think each of us um or e each of you did mention specific examples of, of what can be done uh to change a person's individual uh, uh situation i think this as i said really guys been a, a great session to speak about learning and unlearning and it is about you there's no hiding that everything is about you yes when you're approaching someone and you're scared it may not be your weaknesses that you need to worry about but it is about you approaching. It is about you doing. It is about you acting. And I think with a lot of the difficulties we've had in a South African context, you know, I think sometimes we do go into our shell because, you know, there's a lack of good financial security, which obviously can, 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 can show itself in other ways, you know, and, and, and part of that being a dependence, you know, government will get me through, government will find a way, some way I'll get an opportunity to government, where's the government? And then we get scholarships given to students through NASFAS. And once they qualify, they don't pay the NASFAS money back. And you think, well, that's a difficult one because that's to pay things forward. So I think it's all about you doing the right behavior, finding who the right people are to network with, and, and, and using opportunities to, to move forward. So networking is everything. I mean, I've got some stats here. They say 85% of positions are filled through networking. 70% um, of people who found jobs is through connections, you know, I mean, these, these are frightening numbers. This is review 42, but it's to show that you can, you can almost never over network. It's probably about how you network and, 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 and um, being relevant in terms of the people that you, you're speaking with. So there's a lot that we discussed here. I think really in, in closing, I will uh, firstly uh, say a million thank yous for Stacy for joining us Uh want to say thank you to Koli for being insightful as always. Um, and uh, Alison, um, for your long travels, thank you. I know you're in a different time zone, <laughs> um, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. It was very, very insightful. Um, I will then hand over to Vic now to, to actually close.
but I, I hope that we have learned by unlearning and keep an open mindset around around unlearning in order to learn. Um, Vic, I'll uh, hand, hand it over you, to you uh, by saying, what a time to be alive. This is the time. This is your time. Well done, Eric. Thank you very much. What a time to be alive. Thank you. Thank you. Mine is very brief and very short to say. End of day three. Value Edians, we did this. Um, thank you very much to the to the team. Um, thank you um, to all the panelists that came and 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 spoke. Um, Zila, Letzeko, Sizagele, Rufilwe, Elise, the host, Seko and Derek, Stacy, Allison, and Dolly. Thank you, everybody. It's been it's been fantastic. I know it is short. We are going to be doing these quarterly. The next ones will be coming up in September. We're going to be talking about self-development. Uh, learning and unlearning will always be the theme, but it'll be learning and unlearning, and it's about the concept of self-development. So we'll look out for that, and um, and uh, we'll start, you know, really marketing that before the end of the month. So um, to the youth, happy Youth Day. Uh, to those in June 1976 who got up and showed up regardless of what was in them, to go and make a statement that has actually been the journey of our uh, country since then. Thank you for those of you who sacrificed your lives for us to have this privilege. Thank you. We continue to unlearn what's obsolete and learn what we need to learn and go into the future. So have a beautiful day um, for, and, and, uh, and, and do take care. Please stay safe. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Hey, hey, we did it. Thank Fantastic. you, everyone. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well ciao, done. ciao, everybody. Ciao, ciao. Thank okay. you, Vic Heller. Uh, Thanks, Derek. Thanks, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Bye. Take care. Ciao, ciao. Bye-bye. Thank you for having us.